basically goes through a phase where he learns a prayer and that prayer is generally taught by mom or dad grandparents and the prayer kind of goes now I lay me down to sleep I pray the Lord my soul to keep if I should die before I wake I pray the Lord my soul to take that mom, that dad, or that grandparent, whoever teaches that child that prayer, basically will take that child and put him or her into a room. And when they put that child into that room, they'll give that child a kiss on the forehead and say, good night, my child, I'll see you in the morning. And from that moment on, they don't worry, they don't disturb, they don't bother the child, they just know that that child will be resting through the night and in that morning time, God will bring that child into another day. And so in that same love and same respect and same honor, we say to our dear brother Leonard, good night, Leonard. Good night, Uncle Ray. Good night, big brother. We'll see you in the morning. You all may be seated. Those of you who have never been here before or if you've been here and it's been a long time, I'm Pastor Rush, pastor here of the Inspiring Body of Christ Church, and it is a great honor for us to be here this morning. And when I say honor, I know that's kind of like some mixed emotions, but it is, it is wonderful to be able to be a part of a life that served so many people and to come together for his home going service. This is, um, sometimes you do funerals and people we know have been through a lot of suffering and sometimes it's sudden. And because of the suddenty of this, I would like to thank the Evergreen Funeral Home Chapel 
and the team here for handling this family with such dignity and such pride. And we just appreciate you all for always serving our community and serving our ministry. Uh, this morning, as we have different kinds of mixed emotions, we're gonna go through our program. And this is not just a regular funeral uh, for us. We have funerals a lot. And every once in a while, um, life is interrupted. Um, and it affects us on a personal level. Um, for some of you, you've never walked into a funeral before and you be jamming. Uh, Jesus and me, that's what our jam is, by the way. Choirs singing, music's pumping, folk are clapping and moving because that's what Leonard Garrett brought to this church. And if anybody knows Leonard Garrett, you could talk about a lot of stuff. But sister said, don't talk about his church. That just rubbed him in a bad way. So I just appreciate him being one of those people that stood for the body of Christ. It wasn't about the church or the pastor. He understood what it meant to have corner man. He understood what it meant to be a corner man for other people. What a wonderful program. If some of you have the program, we're going to follow this program this morning specifically, and I'm going to be as brief as possible, uh, but making sure we get through it. Uh, we're going to have our scripture readings this morning by uh, Reverend Yvette Divine, and then our prayer by Pastor Richard Hawkins. Richard, Richard Hawkins. I'm glad to see Richard Hawkins. I ain't seen Richard Hawkins since he was a little boy. I think I was, am I older than you, Richard? Am I in the same neighborhood? We knock it on each other's doors. Hey, Amen. When you're in the projects, you don't have birthdays. You just, you just keep going and living, you know. So I appreciate him being here uh, today. Then we're going to have our choir to sing a song. Um, and then we're going to have a resolutions. Are there, before we get there, are there any resolutions in the house uh, this morning besides the resolution from IBOC? Are there any resolutions? The resolutions are those formal greetings, uh, written statements that are passed on to the family. Any resolutions here? Okay. So we'll have a resolution by the church. And then we're going to have some remarks that will be limited not to two minutes, but to three people. And so I'm just going to make sure that I follow the directions that the family has given me. And then we'll have some special remarks from Parkland Memorial Hospital. And then the choir will bring us other songs. Now, there's a special tribute, a sliding for tribute. You saw that as you were coming in. And so we're just going to, family wanted the choir to sing this morning. They just kept, that. we just, because Richard, I mean, Leonard loved to sing. That's what he did. Amen. And I served, I don't know how many years as his choir director, as a matter of fact, He's not singing today, and I'm not directing today. I'm on strike. That chair that you see in the middle there is a chair that we have in honor of him. That's where he stood for, I don't know how many years. I don't know how many years. How, how many years? Um, where's Jackie? How many years was, was, Leonard, was Leonard here? Tell me how long. It's gotta be 20 years, right? Because I'm in my late, well, I'm, I was here first, so this is good. Can you turn to somebody today and just say, hey, I'm glad you're here. You don't have to shake your hand and all the hey neighbor stuff. I'm for real. Even if they're mad, if you're sitting by somebody mad or mean, can you just let them feel your, your spirit today? I, I don't, you don't know what anybody's going through. Funeral is not on somebody's mind, but somebody just needed that. I'm going to do it one more time because two of y'all I was looking at, y'all didn't turn to anybody. Can you just look and say, hey, how you doing? I'm glad you're here. Come on, just tell them. Say, I'm glad you're here. There you go. I was looking at a couple of you. So let's, let's move on now. Just making sure the microphone working and going on. All right. Good morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
The scripture for the Old Testament this morning is going to come from a very familiar passage of scripture. And it is Isaiah chapter 40. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 40, starting at the 28th verse. And I'll be reading from the easy to read Bible. Amen. Surely you know the truth. Surely you have heard the Lord is the God who lives forever. He created all the faraway places on earth. He does not get tired and weary. You cannot learn all he knows. He helps tired people be strong. He gives power to those without it. Young men get tired and need to rest. Even young boys stumble and fall. But those who trust in the Lord will, not might, not all to, not should, they will become strong again. They will be like eagles that grow new feathers. They will run and not get weak. They will walk and not get tired. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop just for a second in that and say this. Brother Leonard, I never saw him get tired. I never saw him get weary. I never saw him get weak. He stood on that door and I sit right there. And every Sunday, he would open that door for me and close that door behind me. And when I would say, Brother Leonard, don't let anybody through that door after I go through it. Because nobody else is supposed to come back here during this time. He would say, yes, ma'am. And when I would come back, he would let me in. He'd say, I took care of that. <laughs> Amen. He didn't get tired. For our new scripture, New Testament, I'm going to read one of my favorite. That would be 2 Timothy chapter 4. And I'm going to start at verse 6, and it's from the easy to read Bible. Amen. My life is being given as an offering for God. The time has come for me to lead this life here. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have served the Lord faithfully. I'm reading this because I see this in Leonard. Amen. I'm reading this because this is him all together. I have served the Lord faithfully. Now a prize is awaiting for me. The crown that will show I am right with God. Hallelujah. The Lord, the judge that judges rightly, will give it to me on that day. Yes, he will give it. To me on that day. Yes, he will give it to me and to everyone else who is eagerly looking forward to his coming. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, most of all the doers of his holy word. And I know and I believe with my whole heart that Leonard was a hearer, a listener, a speaker, and a doer of his holy word. Hallelujah. God bless you. Oh God, we come right now, first of all, saying thank you, God, for you're a God that never changed. You're always the same. You keep on loving us no matter what. And Lord, we ask you right now that you will continue to comfort this family. For you told us in your word, in the time of trouble, you shall hide us. Hide them in your love, Lord. Tangle them up in your love. Let them know that Brother Leonard is with you. Singing in the holy choir. We only, you only have one song. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, God, for the life that he lived. That he was a servitude towards one another. You told us the other day that love our neighbors as ourselves. And he loves so many people, Lord. And we thank you, God, for letting him be in, a, uh, uh, in our life this time. And we ask you that, that the memories will never be lost. Oh, God, he's just sleeping. Thank you, God. 
Uh, in one of these days, Lord, in that great getting up morning, you shall call him and wake him up. But Lord, we ask you that you will continue to strengthen this family and let them know that without you, they are nothing. But with you, all things are possible. Thank you, God, that you can make nothing, make something out of nothing, Lord. You took us out of the dust and made us and created us in your image and your likeness. And we'd like to ask you right now to have mercy upon this family, Lord. Oh, God, the, the sisters, the father, Lord, the, the sibling, Lord, have mercy on them right now, Lord. You know what they're standing in need of. And we need you like we never needed you before. Thank you, God, for letting us be able to talk to you one more time. For it's so good to be talking to you, Lord. Because every day with you is sweeter than the day before. We say hallelujah. We say glory to your name. For you are an awesome God. You are a great God. You are a meek God. You are a just God. You look over our faults and see every one of our needs. And we say thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Oh, in Jesus' name. In no other name where man can be saved. Only by the Son, Jesus' name. We pray and ask it all. And all the people of God said amen. amen.
the name of Jesus. Oh, we magnify him because he is the source of our strength. Hallelujah. And he is the strength of my life. Giving honor to God, Pastor Rush, Pastor Hawkins, and any other ministers in the building today. To the family of Brother Leonard Garrett. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted, Matthew 5 and 4. To the bereaved family and friends, on behalf of the officers and members of the inspiring body of Christ Church, the Living Sound Choir, and the Ibach Lions Den, we offer these words of healing and consolation. Today we mourn the loss of our dear brother Garrett. Although our grief pales in comparison to the pain you are feeling, we want you to know that the Ibach family shares your loss today. Though we are saddened by his passing, we stand strong in our faith in God, praying that his comfort and peace upon you all. May you find strength in the word of God to get you through your sorrow. Be it resolved that we, we rest in the assurance that Brother Garrett is absent from the body and now in the presence of our loving God. Be it resolved that we know we will one day be reunited with Brother Garrett when we are united in Jesus Christ in the fullness of God's mercy. Our prayer is for you today that the peace of God keeps your mind, the love of God comforts your heart, and your hope in Christ gives you the strength to endure this difficult time. Humbly submitted in faith and appreciation on this 20th day of July in the year of our Lord, 2024. The inspiring body of Christ Church, Dr. Ricky G. Rush, pastor, Deacon Charles Robinson, chairman of the board. While we are still here, there are no other resolutions, right? What we would like to do now is present um, from our choir. As you came under the sanctuary today, you notice uh, our whole 
theme of this ministry is fishers of men. And the way we see it is we don't care who God puts in the net. Whatever God catches, God can clean. And that's just what we believe. And if you came in here today and you're thinking, oh, my life is not like everybody else's life and y'all don't know my story, it doesn't matter to God. He can change you. The problem is a lot of people are getting caught up in the net and we're not believing Jesus anymore because there's no story of change. So one of the things that we wanted to do as we honored Brother Leonard today coming in, there was a picture uh, that was displayed in our, on our aquariums uh, that uh, we want to just present to uh, Tammy and his dad, his brother, and to the family, thank you all so much. I, I very seldom am given gifts or beg for gifts. I don't ask really for anything. I just am appreciative. But I received a, a shirt. I want you to give me a hand when I show you this. I got that shirt from Leonard's dad the day I saw him in his shirt. I was honored to say, wow, that's pretty cool. And I want to wear that shirt. I want to preach in that shirt. Um, and I'm going to tell you why. So many times when a person is a member that's as dedicated as Leonard is, we have a ton of shirts around this church. And for somebody to put a shirt on that says IBOC or my pastor this or our church that, it says a lot. And I thank God that this was a member who was never ashamed of his ministry. He's never ashamed of what God did in his life here. And I'm not ashamed of him. I'll say that again. I'm not ashamed of him. I'm very honored that God would allow us, all of us, to be a part of his life. And what we're going to do now is we have some choir members who have in their possession right now. We have a space marked here. You see in the choir stand, and it's not going to always be there. We'll, it's been there a week now, and tomorrow morning uh, we'll have service, and we'll make sure that the church, again, some of those who don't, don't know will be aware that we have honored him. But we're going to have a, his choir robe. Uh, we're going to retire it today. Uh, we're going to retire it. Nobody prays in that robe like he did. Nobody sacrificed. So what we're going to do is just show it to you, and there is a place in our choir room now um, that's a space on the wall. So to this family, family, I want y'all to stand up for a minute. Y'all can stand there. I'm used to having a mic on me. I don't. So on behalf of the entire church and the Living Sound Choir, that's the name of this group behind you, there will always be a vacancy in our choir room. We would never try to replace a voice like Leonard's. We would never try to replace a, a personality like his. So anytime you're ever in this church, you can always come and see that there's a robe. It'll always be there. And it says in Living Sound, Brother Leonard Garrett here, forever in our hearts, 2000 to 2024. That's a long time to sing. Now, I never heard him sing. I'm just going to tell you the truth. I always saw him up there jumping around or something. But my job was to make sure that he did the best he could. So family, this will always be in our choir room, um, hanging on our walls from now until at least I'm gone. I don't know what they'll do in the future, but that's what that is. And to you brothers and sisters that gave him joy um, while singing, we want you all to know that we won't ever replace him. Amen. We'll just add to what he started in our hearts. Thank you. So after today, we'll go and hang that in our choir room permanently. Thank you all. Amen. So we're going to stop now and just offer a chance for remarks. Um, just remarks. If you, are, if you are one of the three to stand at this mic and give us some remarks, we'll be more than happy to um, 
move aside on the mic. Now, we're going to um, ask for three. Uh, I see, is there is one brother coming? Amen. And there's room for two more people to come and just give remarks. I think it's very appropriate and it's, it's, it's suitable. It's suitable. And there's another sister coming. Uh, if I were going to be preaching long, I would say just give us one, but I'm going to be up here long. That's the other brother. So we have two brothers and a sister that are going to give us remarks. And then after that, um, I'm going to let Tammy come up. And Tammy, you may want to say something if you feel like you don't have to. But um, you can after these brothers are finished. And then we'll get ready for our special remark from Parkland Hospital. Okay, you can have a mic, sir. Thank you so much. All right. First of all, I give our praises to God and to the overseer of this house, Thank you. all the clergies, and to this family. Something about distress makes us not in despair, for the joy of the Lord is our strength today. Yeah. Yeah. Persecuted, we're not forsaken. Cast down, but we're not destroyed. This family not destroyed. But right now, we can raise our hand and say that we have the victory. We have the victory today. We have the victory today. It is so easy to stand up here and tell you good things about Uncle Ray. Uncle Ray was a gentle, gentle soul. And my, my daughter, Terria, she, no, uh, David, she married into this family. And she married into a good, beautiful family. A family with rah-rah, a family with ah, and it's, 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 just, it's just conjoined all together from the family that she come from as well. But I sit here and I stand before you today and want to thank Uncle Ray for the support that he was to my boys, to my grandboys. Just a beacon of light, pleasant to be around, soothing spirit, no hell raiser at all. Just a good, solid person. And it's so easy to speak of someone in that light. And we happened to be here for a short time. I was uh, co-workers at Parkland. I was there for many years. And he was there. And once we knew that our families connected, oh, man, he was cuz, he was Uncle Ray, he was all of that. And I'll tell you this story, and I'm going to sit down. My grandson uh, team was playing in a championship game about, oh, about four years ago. And I can tell you the optimism that uh, Uncle Ray had that he didn't care if we was down or touchdown. He said it ain't over yet, right? What I mean, the Oak Cliff Patriots was giving it to us. They was giving us all that. And then finally, my grandson, he breaks the kickoff and run it back. Now, mind just about three minutes and something in the game, and Uncle Ray said, it ain't over yet. I want to say, Uncle Ray, man, we four touchdowns down. What do you mean it ain't over? God bless you, family. Thank you, all First, giving honor and praise to God and all of the pastors here. My name is Amy, or Embryo. My birth name was Davis, and I think that is something that drew me to this family. But I met my friend, my sister Jackie, when I was only 22 years old. So for 30 years, I've been a part of this family. But I just want to talk about respect. Leonard showed me so much respect just for being his aunt's friend. He smiled every time I saw him, but he understood how much I loved her, how much I loved her children. When I met her, I didn't have children. So they were like my nieces and nephew, Bridget and Stacy and James. I love you all so very much, and I'm so sorry, yet I'm so glad to be here today. Leonard must have told me to wear my red dress because nobody else did. So uh, just to blend in with you guys, to love on you, I want you to remember that family is everything. My family is kind of deplenished. We're all in different places, but the love never goes away. I should have done this last night because there was less people in the room, but I think I had to hold off for something else special today. My best friend from high school is in this choir, 
and her sister as well. So, Leonard brought us all together today, and we will honor him, but we will carry a piece of him. There's a lesson in this today, and I hope that you all don't miss the mark, because I got it. I understood the assignment. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, giving praises to God, my uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to Pastor Rush, to uh, Pastor Hawkins, to this family. Um, you know, Pastor um, Rush, it's not often that I get nervous when I get before folks. Um, and it's not, not, I don't think this family has probably seen me in church without a black suit on, probably ever. I've been a part of their, their lives and they've been a part of mine for, uh, someone was saying 60 years um, and even more than that. I, I'm, I'm family, I, I love these folks. Um, they lived and dined at my house and, and I've, I've lived and dined and they trained me and, and taught me and I just thank God for them. I just wanna give a, a, a shout out to uh, the whole uh, Davis family, and I know the Davis, the Robinsons, the, you know, this whole family. Um, it's lovely. It's a lovely family. And, and Pastor Rush, the last time that I talked with Lena Ray, we talked about you. Hmm. We talked about uh, how you stood and, and how he loved this place and how he loved you. And that's a testament to him. And so when I walked in and saw the choir, let me tell you, I got nervous because I know how much uh, Leonard loved uh, this place. I know how much he loved his family. I know how much he loved us. He was, like folks uh, say, he was always smiling, always up. He was uh, always encouraging. And then when I had uh, issues and, and things were going on in my, in my life, Leonard was encouraging for me. And so he was a lovely person. Uh, to the family. Uh, and, and the other thing I did want to say was, uh, Leonard went from, uh, I'm, I'm here on behalf of the Avenue Progressive Baptist Church. Leonard went from basically there to here. And he never missed a beat. And when he got here, he was the same. And so we saw him grow from a child to a, a, a young man to an adult. And you know, he had not changed. Leonard was the same. He was a lovely person, and I, I thank God for that. I thank God for the influence that he's had on my life. Um, I, and I just wanted to uh, give a shout out, and, and as I say, it's not very often that I get, I get nervous or that I lose words, but you guys know how uh, we love you, and you know how uh, we, we've tried to be a friend, and you guys have been more than friendly, more than lovely uh, to us. You still come by. You, you holler at us, um, uh, Jimmy's still at, at um, what is it, at, at prayer service, and, and he was teaching the lesson. So some of you may not even know that, that Brother Jimmy was teaching a, um, a, a Sunday school lesson in the middle of Wednesday night. So that's how this family is, and that's how uh, God loves you. Thank you, uh, and I thank you for uh, just being a part of my life. I thank you for being a part of the Avenue Progressive Baptist Church, our lives, for always thinking of us, loving us, never forgetting us. And I just cannot thank you enough. I guess I don't have to for the send off that you're giving uh, Lena Ray because uh, this was just beautiful. Thank you. It makes my heart uh, just, just uh, reach up and, and touch the cloud. Thank you. You don't look nervous at all. As a matter of fact, you look absolutely wonderful. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for being sir. for representing. Yeah. All right. And, and you know, and, and, and Pastor, the reason I didn't wear black was because Leonard wasn't that black and white guy, right? Leonard was, he was always a little. And so I told my wife, uh, Donna, I said, you know what? I'm not wearing black today. <laughs> I'm just not wearing black because that's what they expect. But thank you. <laughs> thank you, Pastor. What's your name again? Uh, my name is... Uh, Robin Dickens and Tammy said Michael, so everybody calls me Michael. Okay, that's Michael. Okay. Yes, sir. And, and you taught my uh, nephews over at Skyline. Wow. Right, so I, I know. So I know you they're know, smart. I know. I know they're smart. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike. All right. Okay. <laughs> Man, I love my church. That's what I just, 
We just love being around people here. So um, I'm going to ask, Tim, do Tim, you want to say anything to us? You feel like it, you know, she's just anybody in the family room, just thank you. Tim, you can just come and, what, and do whatever you feel like it in your heart. I'm in charge right now, so nobody has to say anything. Okay, so if you're good, you're good, so so they're gonna come stand with you, Tammy. Tammy, can you hear me? Okay, are oh, they gonna they gonna come stand with you? Okay, cause y'all not about to do no song, and I know you. Y'all look, y'all getting ready to throw down. No, we've been practicing in the garage. Okay, Dad's got the shirt on. I ain't got a chance to put my shirt on yet. Okay, so y'all just gonna stand together, and okay, Tammy, you go ahead. That doesn't feel like it. It's okay. I would like to first say giving all praises to God, to the ministers, uh, the pastors here, to my family, my friends, everybody that's here that's supporting us. I just want to say thank you for the calls, the text messages, the food, the money, whatever, whatever it was that you did in support of our family. I just want to say thank you because this is hard. Um, it's nothing else that I can say that, it, that hasn't been said about my brother. All I know is I just I don't have my ride or die. You see him, you see me. You see me, you see him. And I just want to keep just ask y'all for y'all prayers to keep us lifted up in your prayers. My grandbabies, they love their uncle. My kids, my, they love their uncle. Everybody loved him. And it shows. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you all so much. We have a representative here um, from Parkland Memorial Hospital. It's on the program, and we're going to stop at this time and allow our representative from Parkland to stand. Well, everybody else from IBOC that made it today, our audio team, our visual team, ministers, our deacons, our uh, choir, anybody from IBOC, can y'all just stand for a minute? Let this family know how much Brother Leonard means to us. Thank you all for being a part of our service today. Thank you. All right, now, my brother. Giving all praises to God, to Pastor Rush, other members, uh, members and friends and visitors. My name is Samuel Jones, and I'm a represent uh, on behalf of Parkland Memorial Hospital. And before I do what I came here to do, I would like every member of Parkland, past or present employee, to please stand. Thank you. And as you can see, uh, Parkland employees all over the place like space. So I just want to say uh, what hasn't already been said about uh, Brother Leonard, and uh, I'm going to be very uh, obedient to the protocol here. Um, uh, I'm going to say it like this. I won't be in front of you long. OK. What can you say about Brother Leonard? Um, what I can tell you that when he was at work, um, he was very giving. He was very, um, we already know about his smile. Um, he was very uh, generous with his time, with his efforts. Because when we had one of these spreads um, at the job and everything, you know, he wanted to make sure that everybody is have something. He wanted to make sure everybody has something, in particular uh, on Mother's Day. Um, regardless of uh, uh, every woman there is a mother or not, he wanted to make sure everybody was included as part of, um, you know, just being a mother. Because you don't have to be a biological mother just to be a mother. It, it just, it's just something that's in you. And uh, there's many stories I can tell about Leonard, but due to the interest of time, uh, I can only tell you one. Um, I remember when I was, um, you know, filing my charts, and Lennon was, um, he, he had his ear, ear, uh, ear pies on, and, uh, and 
I was going down the road, and then all I hear was he was he, he kept on saying, "You ain't gonna break my soul. You ain't gonna break my soul." I said, "Okay, <laughs> okay." And I, uh, I said, okay, shoot. Um, I already know what he jamming to, uh, Beyonce. So, uh, so I said, I just gonna go by my business and gonna file my charts and keep it moving. So after I finished that, I, con I came back and he kept playing the same song. You ain't gonna break my soul. You ain't gonna break my soul. And then I realized that, that this, is, this, this definitely defined who Leonard is to me. And just like what all my other employees, uh, I mean, uh, my fellow coworkers, excuse me, was devastated when we got the news that he transitioned. And, and needless to say, uh, one, one thing about Leonard, he can't be replaced. He's irreplaceable. His spirit, <laughs> his spirit um, is, um, is all over the place um, at work and we love him, and we, we respected him. He was a genuine dude, and he was unapologetic about who he was, because he know who he was, because it didn't matter where he was, because he didn't define where he was and who he was. So before I take my seat, uh, I'm going to say this. When it's, when it's all said and done, one thing for certain is that we only here for a short time, everybody. So you need to, we need to maximize the moment while we here. Because at the end of the day, that box will one day become our box. So at the same time, every day you wake up, think about saying thank you just by waking up. And every day, and every day you building on your eulogy. You building on your eulogy. And then when, and then when uh, Leonard told me um, the last day that I saw him that, oh, we got a, uh, we got a, uh, we got a merit increase. I said, okay, great, wonderful. And then to found out that he went from having a merit increase, he went from that to being upgraded. He went from being a coworker to becoming an angel. The Bible, in God, in the Bible, God, it said in the Bible that uh, in, with God there are many mansions. And he gave Leonard a mansion. He gave the keys to the mansion. I know we're in inflation, but where Leonard is now, it's paid in full. And it's paid with the blood of Jesus. So I take solace. I take solace knowing that he's in a better place. No, not a better place. He's in the best place right now. He's absent in the body, but he is alive in the spirit. He's alive in the spirit. And before I go, one last thing. I say that when he, uh, when he, when he passed, it hurts. And it still hurts. And my, my prayer is out to the family right now. And, we know they're gonna be um, harder days gonna be coming up, you know, with his birthday and holidays. They'll they'll never be the same again. But one thing you can take, rest assured, on behalf of myself and the rest of the employees here at Parkland, we sympathize as well as empathize with you. Because the difference between sympathy and empathy is when you sympathize. You know, some people will go, okay, you know, we'll, we'll sympathize, we'll send some flowers and everything, and then, you know, we'll go about our business, we'll go to Joe V's across the street, go get something to eat, and all that. But when we emphasize, we, we stay in contact with you. We're not going to forget you. We're not going to forget you. And I just want to say that I loved them, we loved them, and I just want to say thank you to the family for giving us this opportunity and this time to, uh, to express our love uh, for Brother Leonard. And he, had to, and he said at the end of the day that you ain't gonna take my soul. You ain't gonna take my soul. Rest in peace, King. Rest in peace, Godspeed. And I wish you, Leonard Garrett Jr., a peaceful journey. 
Thank you, y'all. All right, y'all. Uh, I'm Xavier. That, that was my uncle and everything. So uh, he used to love to hear me sing and all that. So I'm just going to sing a little song real quick. I wasn't going to do it but because I'm a little under the weather. You see what I'm saying? But uh, <clears throat> let me see here. Soon I will be done with the trouble. Love you. I can't do it. Soon I will be done with the trouble and love this world. The trouble of this world. Trouble love this world. Soon I will be done with the trouble love this world. I'm going home to live with God. Soon I will be done with the trouble of his world. The trouble of this world. Ooh, the trouble. Soon I will be done with the trouble. Love this world. I'm going home to live with God. No more weeping and wailing. No more, there ain't no more, there ain't no more. We've been in wailing, oh, there's no more. We've been in wailing, I'm going home to live with God. I'm sorry, y'all.
spoke to each other and Brother Leonard had a contagious smile and a quiet spirit. And he used to know I get nervous every time I come up here and sing. We used to be in the choir room and he would come up to me and mess with me and say, you know pastor gonna sing one of your songs today. <laughs> and he would just tease me like that because he know I would get nervous. But I'm gonna miss my brother. And I thank God for it. What's to come is. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this moment. We've 
never been here before. We'll never come here again. When we leave this moment, we move forward. <clears throat> so, Lord, we just thank you for just giving us an opportunity to stand and listen to words, sing songs, and speak into somebody else's life that's here right now. Uh, in Jesus' name. I never want to preach long enough or pastor long enough to not be affected by moments like this. I don't want to be a kind of a robotic preacher or pastor and people's Deaths not affect me. I see several of you who I haven't seen in a long time. Thank you for coming to church. Thank you. Those of you who prepared the funeral services, programs, you guys did an awesome job sending your brother your son, your uncle away with a lot of class. Funerals are not easy to do. You always make somebody mad when you do a funeral because somebody wasn't included or someone's picture wasn't added, things like that. Uh, from the picking of the wonderful casket to the beautiful floral arrangements. Jackie, you, okay, uh, Tammy, you guys did, a, you did an awesome job, okay? We wanted this funeral today so that we could also be here, you know, without having so many people to not miss jobs and all. Um, and thank you for accommodating us. I am not officially, I don't know if I'm official or not official, to stand here this morning, uh, meaning that I myself am walking through another form of healing. So I'm going to be extremely brief and this is the first time in 50-something years of preaching that I really mean that. Um, I'm just honored to be able to stand and to talk over our brother. I want to say something before I read the scripture. I want everybody in here. Where, where is the young man that just sang that song a minute ago? Stand up for a minute, brother. Yeah, the one that wasn't on program. I don't know your name. Do I, do I know you? Have we met before? I don't know you. Thank you for having the heart to sing that song. All right. I'm going to say this because when you stood up there, you looked suspect. I started watching you. Never took my eyes off you. I looked at your hands, and your hands looked, no, no, I'm just anyway. But I have learned that you never know what God has wrapped up in a package. You, you know what you look like when you stood up there? You look like Richard a bunch of years ago who walked into a church like this. I, um remember talking to Richard about helping him with his gap. Yeah, he was a part of the gap band. That's, you know, the people. Who, and he's like, no, no, Pastor Rush, that's me. And I often sometimes will see things and say, hey, man, we can help you. That's who he was. And thank you for being who you were. I don't know you, but I'd like to get. Do you go to church anywhere? Not yet? Okay. I'm going to personally invite you to come to this church, okay? That's a personal invitation from the pastor. No, and I don't mean to try to sound cool, because I'm not cool. I'm just old. But that's the way I roll. See, I roll like that. Everybody's looking for somebody who's 
see me to have it all together. You may be the most together brother in here, but it took a lot of courage. And you didn't just sing that song. I would never see that movie, the same, Imitation of Life, you know, that soon I'll be done. That lady ain't got nothing on you, brother. I'm on, America's got talent, but I about got you. Sit down, we're done with you. That's the way Rich, see that's a Richard dude. I don't know why I keep saying Richard. Leonard, that's a Leonard dude. See, that's a Leonard, that, that's a Brother Gary kind of dude. I don't, I don't remember a whole conversation with Leonard. He didn't talk. He, he scared people like Beaumont because he was always scared himself. I'm just going to tell you the truth. John 13, 34 says, I give you a new covenant that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everybody's gonna know that you are my disciples. If you have love, one for another. I just want to talk to you from this subject for the next, what is it, 12.33. Let's get out of here. Let's be gone at 12.40. Is that okay with everybody? I don't mean to put a limit on you, but I'm putting a limit on me. Let's talk about the real deal. The real deal. Um... We're here today because Brother Garrett was the real deal. Uh, I want to say we need to be careful. This is my first point about what we say about people that we don't know. Words hurt. Words are like splinters. Um, you don't know who they will affect, and like a splinter, you don't know where to land in your heart, and you don't know if your words will kill people. So if you never ever come back to church again, if I don't, and I don't know you, I want you to hear today that the Lord sent a word through Pastor Rush to tell you, be careful of your words. They hurt and they kill. Because words can get into a person, someone can call you something, say something about you, never met you before, complete lies, and they can say words to you that could totally destroy you. Be careful of how you use your words. Now, maybe up until now, you were a person that used a lot of different words, but now, from this moment on, I want you to be extremely careful that when words are come out of your mouth, if you can go back and, and just destroy those, fine. Also, those of you who hear words that come in that may hurt you, I'm gonna encourage you to have a personal surgery as soon as someone says something that could damage you, open your heart, take those words out, throw them away, because they could affect you. Amen. That's all right to give a clap on that. All right? If you've never been to church here before, see, I'm almost done now. Do this. Take your hand, right like this, like I'm doing, if you can see me. O open, pretend you open your heart. Okay, I'm going to tell my brothers in the front, too. Okay, I'm used to talking to brothers in the front. Okay, do it like this. Come on, brother, so we can hear them get out of here. Oh, 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 open it up a little bit. Reach this hand in there. Take out all those words somebody called you. Stupid, fat, ugly, crazy, poor, black. Your mama ain't going to be no. Take all those words out. Take them, put them up here like that. Throw them down. I want you to constantly do that. And I say after me, I'm healed. See, somebody's going to have to learn to come to you in more ways than one to destroy you now. All right? I watched Leonard take words out. And he stood for whoever was trying to be that disciple. Jesus said that. I didn't say that. They're going to know you're my disciples if you have love one for another. And they won't see that love if it's full of other folks' stuff. There was a guy who purchased, and this is a true story. I was with a friend, and they were out. And... 
I'm, I'm trying to say this in a way that it'll sound like a story because it's true, but I don't want to mention the person's name because the minute I start talking, everybody might know. And I don't want to put them words on them, you know, like that. But he was out with a group of other friends. And he was the kind of guy that, you know, liked to show off. Uh, some of us in here, uh, I'm going to say us because I'll pretend it's me. Well, we, we like name brand stuff now. You know, amen. Uh, Gucci. I think that's something new. Uh, Coach. Uh, Ale. Like Levine's. <laughs> Not Louis Vuitton. I'm, I'm serious. Levine's right up on 67. So, so your name brand, you know. <laughs> what's yours? What's yours, brother? What's yours? What's your KM? Kmart? There you go. See, so we all... We all got our name brands, but anyway, so he had on this watch, and this is for real. <laughs> he was out, and something had happened, and, it, and they were clapping, and the watch fell off. Now, this is a true story. The watch fell off, and it fell to the ground. Uh, when the watch fell to the ground, he uh, stooped down and picked it up, and of course, some a couple of other guys were around. Okay, we were all there, so we kind of reached down and helped pick up the, pick up the watch, because when a brother's watch falls off, um, that's what you do. You're supposed to pick down and help pick it up. And he pick up the watch. And so have you ever done that with someone, that earring fell out or, or the watch fell off or something fell out of their hair or something, and you find yourself me reaching them and you look right in their eyes. And so we were able to look up and we kind of watched and met at eye length as we were coming up and realized that this watch was not real. Have you ever seen someone like that? You, you see them dressed and you go, oh my God, look at that watch. And it's, it's kind of real looking, but it's just got too much going on with it. I'm almost done, y'all gonna miss church here in a minute. But I looked at it and realized, I think, because I don't know, because I've never had one and I don't desire that kind of thing. I think it was supposed to be a, Ro a Rolex. And it wasn't, it wasn't, it, was, it wasn't, it wasn't, uh, we already knew it. Uh, but it was, it was just a cheap imitation. You see, it was attractive, but it wasn't authentic. It was glittering, but it wasn't genuine. It was pretty, but it wasn't pure. It was fashionable, but it was not functioning. It was stylish, but it wasn't sound. It was ticking, but it wasn't true. It was running, but it was not real. My friend, our buddy had been sold a bunch of goods that were not real. And sometimes when we walk around living in this world, we meet people who are just not real. Some people don't like church anymore because those of us who come and serve God and clap our hands and sing Christian songs and songs to the Lord, we just seem suspicious to people. Because it's amazing how we can say that we love God and yet we go through so much trouble that people kind of think that we're not authentic. And it's not that we don't go, am I talking to anybody else? You know, it's not that we don't go through it, it's how we come out of it. As a matter of fact, I am a little uptight this morning because we teach life here. We don't teach that people die early. Uh, Leonard died early. And I'll address that in my last statement. We live in a society that's difficult. It's difficult to tell the real from the unreal now. Yeah, there was a time when you could look at something and tell exactly what it was. In fact, where's Lisa? Is Lisa here? Lisa's not here this morning. Stand up, Lisa. Mm -hmm. Lisa used to water artificial flowers in front of her house. You can sit down, Lisa. That came out. I, I not, nobody ever knew that until right now. The Spirit of the Lord just used her in a sermon. I don't know why Lisa planted and watered artificial flowers, amen, but, her, but nobody ever condemned her yard. It, her flowers were always 
Beautiful. But they weren't, y'all, y'all, I'm, I'm just, now she's right there. She can tell she never thought she ever missed. I don't even think she even knew that we knew that, but we never talked about that. But our culture is fascinated with lookalikes. We have a lot of lookalikes and a lot of lookalike contests. Uh, and there was a comedian by the name of Groucho Marx, and he entered. Groucho Marx, he was a comedian. And he entered. This is a true story. He entered a contest that was a lookalike contest for Groucho Marx. He entered a contest that was a contest for a lookalike for himself. And he came in third place. <laughs> in the eyes of the judges, somebody else looked more like Groucho than he did himself. So sometimes now it's just like that. You can't tell the real from the unreal. And we shouldn't be surprised that a lot of people are suspicious of us and are quick to ask questions of us. Are we real Christians? In the Bible here, the disciples came to Jesus and some said, are you really the one? Are you really the one? And Jesus, of course, in Matthew, the 11th chapter, John the Baptist, who was his cousin, who was supposed to know him, came to him and asked that question, are you really the one? Are you really the real Messiah? And I just came by for just a few minutes to tell you that if they questioned Jesus' authenticity, somebody's gonna question your authenticity. And sometimes you don't know how real a person is because we're looking at how they live. But at my age now, I want you to know that I've learned to watch how people die. How do you get to be a church member like Leonard? I want to give you five quick things, and I got two minutes. One, attend regularly. He came every time these doors open. Um, it wasn't for his sake, but it was also because he had other brothers and sisters who were looking forward. I just challenge somebody, if you go to a church already, keep going because other people are looking for you. Number two, engage deeply. And all that means is you can go regularly and never really get engaged in church. Have you ever seen people sit up in church and just, I don't know, everybody has a face that we have when we smell something stink. Have you ever been to church sometimes? Somebody, look at the person next to you, do they have a stink face right now? You can be there and not be engaged. Okay, so, but, and so he would be engaged. He would have a church look on his face. He just looked like, I'm glad to be here. And, and I promise you, with the more you engage, the blessed your church is going to be by you. It kind of means something for me to talk right here, and I got some engagement behind me. Amen. It kind of meant something when the brother grabbed the mic a minute ago, and he put it up like, you soon I will be done. He would have quit, but somebody got engaged with him. Somebody started clapping behind him, and he may not have known the words, but an aunt came and whispered some words in his ear, and he blessed our hearts. If you want to be like Uncle Leonard, come regularly and then be engaged. Number three, preserve your unity. See, we have to live in peace and live in unity. And, and I'm just saying what it means to be here. This is, what's, this is why we're here right now, why I'm standing here, not in doctor's orders, but by the orders of the Holy Spirit. But to engage you know, with unity means to be quick to forgive. You can't hold on to it too long. Somebody's going to say something. Somebody's going to tick you off, and you can't hold on to it too long. You got to let it go because you don't know when that'll be your last time. 
right, sister from Parkland? We don't know. So you got to, to be like that, you got to let go of it. And then number four, you got to serve faithfully. Uh, we, 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 we missed him because we, when we were here, he was here. And we didn't have to wonder where he was going to be. We knew he was here. Put yourself out there and let God use your gifts and let him build up other people in your church. That's how you serve faithfully. You may not know what you can do, but if all you know is one verse to sooner will be done, then sing your verse. And every time they see you, they know what you're going to do. Soon I will be done. Some folk going to criticize it, laugh at it, talk about it. But somebody going to look forward to it. And they're going to say, what's his name? I don't know his name, but I know what he can do. Soon I will be I never heard Leonard sing in the mic my whole life. But he rubbed off on you and you sang because he served. And the last point that I'll make in my one minute is extend grace continuously. That's how you get to be a member like that. And I pray that Pastor uh, Richard Dawkins that heard the message today, that's how you get these Leonards. They don't just come, man. You don't go to, you don't put out invitations for them. They have to live through stuff like that. And the number five thing is just extend grace because there is no perfect church. It doesn't exist. Every church is imperfect because it's made up of imperfect people just like you and just like me. And that's why we need to always operate in grace. Just realize somebody's going to mess up. Somebody's going to do something crazy. Somebody's going to do something that doesn't make sense. Somebody's going to stand up in the middle of a church when everything is over. Somebody's going to grab a mic and go, Soon I will be done. And nobody else is going to understand it except those of us that say, that's grace right there. I'd rather be in a building where a brother would stand up and sing a song than sit on a bench with a woman who just mumbles the whole time doing service. I'd rather sit there with a brother that thinks this might be my last time than somebody sit there and wonder when we're going to get out on time because you want to sport your broken watch. That's how you get to be Leonard's. That's who I pastored. And that's why I'm here. And you need to understand who he was to us. Someone that never stopped coming. He didn't have a parking space. He didn't have a title. I don't think he ever had anything but a heart. So I don't know how you knew him. I didn't know that he was a Beyonce fan. I didn't know that part right there. See, I didn't know that. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. But I do know that he didn't sell his soul. I, I do know that. I don't know if that's Beyonce or that's old gospel music. I don't know what that is. But I know that he didn't do that. But I do know one thing that if he were here, he would want me to do. And this is how I'm going to close. When my mom was alive, and I used to tell this story all the time. I still do. She died. And she died when I was a kid, but my mom would come home every day early. And when she would come home, Tammy, she would say, Ricky, before I come home, when I get home, I need to have this house cleaned up. And if this house ain't cleaned up, she said, I'm going to whoop your behind. Now, we were from the project. She, I never heard her say behind, but that's what I can say right now. <laughs> Poopy. But I got the message. Hey, Amen. She must have, my mama might have listened to Beyonce. I don't know. But I'm just saying, she would say, I get. So my mama came home every day around 4 o'clock. And one day, my mama came home at 12 o'clock. And when she came home at 12 o'clock, she told me every day, man, when I get home, boy, this house better be cleaned up. We lived in the projects. It didn't take much. But I knew I had time. So I knew if she went home at work early in the morning, by the time 4 o'clock came up, I could pick up stuff. I could pick up stuff. I could pick up stuff. Y'all with me? Anybody know anything about the projects? Please raise your project hand. I can tell because your shoe's already off. We already know who you are. Right. So she would, she would tell me, I need the house to be in order. Mama came home 4 o'clock every day, sharp. This day it was 12 o'clock. She came home, and uh, she came through the door, and she just went out and got a switch. And she just started whipping me with the switch all over me. 
she could stand still. It just got in places. I don't know how the switch got in your shoe and back of your ear. You don't. You didn't even know how bad it was till you took a bath that night. And you were hurting in places. But that's what she did. And uh, as I stand here now, my mom, because she came home early, she didn't have time to get it together, but she was whipping me, not because she didn't like me, because I was a bad kid or lying and all that, you know, because I listened to Beyonce or, you know, in them days it would have been James Brown. But my mama whipped me that day, y'all, because she came home early and she caught me with my work undone. I didn't have the house in order. I don't know what happened to Richard. Leonard. I don't know who Richard is. Maybe it's time for you to come join my church. I don't know what happened to Leonard. And people say, what happened to him? I say, I don't know. And I've been sad because I don't know. I know, I know a lot of stuff, y'all. I don't know. We're waiting on some reports to come in because we, we hope it's something we could have been able to prevent. So I don't know, y'all, okay? But I know this. He had his house in order. See, I don't know when God's coming for any of us now. But all I know is if, if he comes early, y'all, we got to get our houses in order. Okay. It's all right to cry in this church. We got to get our houses in order. And I ain't talking about just, just, just coming to church every once in a while, man. I'm talking about Let's sweep this trash out every day. Somebody cuss you out. Somebody call you by your name. Somebody lie on you. Get that out your house. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And it's not that people don't say amen in church anymore. Praise the Lord. It's got so much junk already in the house. You don't want to say thank you, Jesus. We're so stuck up and sophisticated and all this stuff. And we got our fake Rolex and we got Rolex on and taking Rolex. I don't know what it is. You know what I'm saying? And God just said, can, can, can y'all just get, can we just get a house in order? I can't go around anymore trying to remember who to be mad at. I don't have that kind of time anymore. And so you can do me wrong by five times in a row because I'm not going to get back at you now because I'm not going to let that stay on my heart. So I just want to do one more thing, and that's all I came to do. I just want everybody to close your eyes. And just don't, don't look at me. Don't look at anybody. Even if you're hard-headed, just take a nap. We're going to get out of here. Just please close, close your eyes. And I'm just going to ask a question, and I promise I'm not going to embarrass anybody. I've already embarrassed Lisa. That's the last person today. I'm not going to embarrass anybody. But with your eyes closed, you came to this funeral today to pay respect to Leonard, Brother Garrett, Uncle Ray. And I told you I was only going to be here 10 minutes. It's been past 10. Forgive me for that church lie. But I'm, I did what I said I was going to do. Now I want to do what God wants to do, just real quick. You in this room right now, you may not have been to church in years and may not know Jesus and all that stuff. And maybe until I just spoke, you may have thought all this stuff was kind of fake. They up there clapping and waving their hands and la da 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 da. And somebody may have said some stuff about you. Somebody else may have believed it and caused them to go astray. But right now, if you're in this room and this second, if you personally know, I need to get my house in order. Come on, this is Pastor Rush. I'm not going to embarrass you. I promise I'm not. But if you just heard me say, I need to get my house in order, and this is just you and God, everybody's eyes are closed. I don't want you to see anybody's hand. If you know that you need to get your house in order, can you just raise your hand real quick? Real quick. Just one of them. Okay. You can put it down. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I want everybody to just repeat after me because, see, 
when the Lord deals with you, he deals with you personally. So I just want you to repeat these words. Now, I want everybody to repeat them because if a person had their hand up and they start repeating, somebody's going to look like they're the ones. I want all of us to say it because I want you to believe it. If you know you need to get your house in order, repeat these words after me. Keep your eyes closed, please. Please. Say, Lord, I heard from you today. And you told me. You told me to love. And I have to love myself. I believe in my heart that I need to get my house in order. And I want to give you my life right now in Jesus name now listen to me don't open your eyes yet some of you may have been thinking that and you trusted me to see you with your hand up I was the only one but maybe you didn't open your mouth and say that you said well I'll just think it I just want to say this to you okay you can stay in your cool zone but God doesn't answer thoughts he answers prayers. So it's okay, you know, I'm, I'm a dad and a grandpa and all that stuff. It's okay to, to be cool and say, I'm not going to say that. They don't have to make me say that. But at least I know you know now. And that's why we dropped by here today. Because it was really the Lord that said, I'm going to bring you guys in the same place. So I can tell you, it's time for us to be the real deal. We're not trying to compete with nobody else's church, nobody else's preacher, nobody else's heaven or hell. It's the real deal. You accept him and you're going in. Now, after you accept Jesus, man, it's crazy. All kind of stuff goes against you. But that's why you got to keep getting that stuff out of your heart, okay, y'all? Keep emptying your trash every day. All right. Open your eyes. We're done and we're good. My job was to just represent him today. Amen. We're going to call our team from Evergreen down now. And we're going to have our choir to just bless us with a song or so as we go out of the building. To those of you that accepted the Lord, there are some churches all around. Go, to, go somewhere tomorrow, y'all. For real. If you, if, if you just got an x-ray done on your life right now, it's like, wow, I just found that my heart was for something. Go somewhere and let's get that out, okay? Let's get that out. We're here every Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And um, I'll personally be back in the pulpit first Sunday in August. But we got Sister Divine going to bring our message tomorrow morning. We are here. Thank you for letting us bless you, all right? You on program anywhere tomorrow, man? You, you open tomorrow? What's on your book tomorrow? What's on your book at 10 o'clock? You, are you open tomorrow? You open, are these your sons or nephews or nephew? You live in the neighborhood? You live in Mesquite? Can you be here in the morning? You, you don't have to sing yet. I just want you to come be my guest. Is that all right? I appreciate it. Can I have a hug, man? Now, let me hug you because I've been having a pretty interesting back issue. So I won't personally invite you to church. That's the way I roll. A brother, they can grab it by the mic. But top down soon, I will be. I'm serious. I did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I told you you were suspect, we were watching you. He said, I know my guys were watching. Yeah, we be watching you. Everybody in church ain't going to heaven. Everybody at the airport ain't going out of town. It's some crazy folk going church. Amen. We save your soul, but we will mess you up too. In Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all, let's sing. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Love you, man. I'm going to look for you in the morning. I'm not playing with you.